So now I'll do power factor compensation of a screw or cage machine using the data acquisition for monitoring. First I want to connect my data acquisition unit to the computer. To do that I just connect the USB cable from the computer to the data acquisition. But I also need to give 24 volts to my unit here. The green light is a warning that I have power in and the computer beat as well to tell me that uh, it recognized the driver. So I will start the software that is called LVDAC for Lab Vault Data Acquisition and Control. Now it tells me that it found the data acquisition interface. I'll just activate all of the functions for now. I don't want to have to think about what is activated or not and then it is ready to go. I'll start with just basic meters. So into my instruments I start metering. You need to hit the continuous refresh button for to have readings in there. Now I say I have fractions of a volt which is to be expected. I have nothing connected. So it's just background noise. Okay so I'll start here from my variable 3 phase and connect that to voltmeter. So I have phase 1 into voltmeter E1, phase 2 into voltmeter E2, and phase 3 into voltmeter E3. Now each of the input is floating. I don't have a common ground. So I will need to bring the neutral to the negative side of the voltmeters. For the three of them, since they're floating, I need to do the connections like this here. So now can I test just that section? Yes, I bring the power supply to zero volt, turn it on. Looking at the meters while I boost the voltage here, I see that my voltmeters E1, E2 and E3 are giving me my voltage, so this section works so far. Turning the power supply off. I also want to monitor the current coming from the power supply. So I could take it from here and go through the ammeters, but instead of taking long leads, I already have my power supply here. So I'll just use short jumpers to go here. So. Phase 1 into a meter 1, phase 2 into a meter 2, and phase 3 into a meter 3. I'm using the middle row, which is the low amps scales. I don't need a high amp scale on that. Out of the ammeters, I'll use long leads now because of this configuration I selected. I want to go to my scroll cage machine. So phase one, phase two, and phase three. And I'll do a Y connection here by doing a short circuit on the uh, second side of my coils in my scroll cage machine. So now if I start my power supply and raise the voltage, starting from zero, watch those currents here and voltage. I see that I have roughly 120 volts and 0.8 amps per phase. I don't need the meters E4 and I4. I did not connect them, so I'll just turn them off now. Let's see now the power P1, P2, and P3. I see roughly 35 watts per phase to 40 watts. Now I will configure additional meters here. Let's say I take this one, meter setting. Let's say on this one I want to see the power factor. 
from a single phase is, is good. It's a balanced circuit. I could also ask this one to be to see the power, but I want, let's say, the sum of the three powers in that case. And I'll set that to Q for the VARs. Now I have 268 VARs for only a total of maybe 110, 120 watts here. How can I improve that power factor? By adding capacitors in parallel to my motor. So coming from the motor, phase 1 into capacitor 1, phase 2 into capacitor number 2, and phase 3 into capacitor, I'll let you guess, number 3. All the capacitors off at first, because I want to show what will happen when I increase that. Successively add capacitors into that here. You see, it doesn't change the speed of the machine or anything, but what we will see is that the reactive power is going down and the power factor is improving. So, in that case, I have a 98.7% uh, power factor. Well, if I remove all of my capacitors, my power factor was 35%, which is very bad. Now, that is something you could have done just using regular meters. But you can also do that using an oscilloscope. If I use here E1, E2, and E3, that's my three voltages. I see my three phase voltage. And on the next channels, I put my current I1, I2, and I3. I see that they are not in phase, they are not coming together. But when I add the capacitors, The currents are both becoming smaller and more in phase with the voltage. And we see the noise that is characteristic to, to uh, oil capacitors. Another way to demonstrate that, let's I go back to uh, my default configuration. I think if I just turn it on and off, Yep. Let's say here I display voltage E1 with current I1 and on channel 3 I'll display the instantaneous power P1. I'll just turn the other ones off for now. Turn the instrument on and refresh. I see that my voltage in yellow, channel 1, is not in phase with my channel 2, which is uh, cyan here. So my power goes negative and positive. I'm exchanging power with the grid. Well, if I do my power factor compensation, my current comes back in phase, but my power also doesn't come negative. So I'm always drawing power from the company instead of exchanging with the power company. Last way to show that if you're more into mathematics is the phaser analyzer. I remove my power factor compensation again. So let's see here I want to display my voltage E1, E2 and E3. So that's my voltage E1. I'm at 50 volts per division so that's 50, 100, 120. Well, I see it here, in fact. 
Voltage E2 is 120 degrees lagging, E3 is another 120. If I put the currents here, I see that my currents are not in phase, they're almost 90 degrees out of phase with that. If I was to increase the mechanical load, because now I add active power, current becomes bigger, and it looks like it is becoming more in phase. In fact, the angle gets better, but the reactive part, the part that is out of phase, didn't, didn't change in amplitude. I removed the mechanical load. If I go to reactivate my capacitors for power factor compensation, I see now that my current is way smaller and almost in phase with the voltage. If I increase the mechanical load, the, the angle almost doesn't change. The amplitude of the current changes but the angle doesn't change.